One of the most famous stories in the Bible is of the Israelites escaping Egypt and then wandering in the wilderness. It took them 40 years to find the promised land. Now, if you're familiar with the maps in the back of your Bible, the wilderness wanderings would take place in the Sinai Peninsula and then in the southern part of Israel, which is called the Negev Desert. Well, we're in the Negev Desert. I've always wondered what it would be like to hike in the Negev Desert, to do a little wilderness wandering of my own. Now, I have no intention of spending 40 years here. We brought plenty of water. I hope we brought plenty of water because there is none in the wilderness and a little bit of food and a good attitude. So you want to go see what it looks like? Let's go hike in the wilderness. The wilderness wanderings happened a long, long time ago. We do not know the exact route Moses and his people took as they traveled out of Egypt and into the wilderness. But if you travel extensively in Israel, you'll find that the landscape of the Negev Desert doesn't change a lot. Every path looks a lot like this one. Rocks are everywhere. Water is nowhere to be found. We made this hike in late spring when some of the scrubby plants were still green. But after enduring a few weeks of the intense summer heat Israel knows, this desert will look like the kind of place where nothing, and in some ways where you would think no one could live. It didn't take us long on this hike before we were looking for some shade. Amazingly, we found some. There was an acacia tree in the distance. Acacia trees are plentiful in the desert. Moses used acacia wood to build frames for the tabernacle and all of the furniture inside the tabernacle. On this hike, we did what people have been doing for centuries when they spotted acacia trees in the wilderness. We took a break. Well, this is, this is kind of a long walk, and we're just spending part of a day in the wilderness. I can't imagine 40 years in the wilderness, or even as so many people in the Bible did, walking from the Galilee region up to Jerusalem, a family taking a three, four, five, six day hike. That's just not something I relate to. But I tell you something I do relate to is shade when it's really hot. One of the climbing songs, one of the hiking songs says that the Lord will be your shade at your right hand. He's never further away than your right hand would be the concept. Of course, most of this hike is going to be in full blown sun. Um, that, that hiking song says, the sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord is your shade. Well, we found a little bit of shade on this hike, and we need to take a break. Uh, God provides the shade. You just have to be smart enough to realize that when a, when a time of rest comes in that long, difficult journey that you might call the wilderness in your own life, you got, you got to take it. That's what God has provided. It's, it's going to be a long hike. Take advantage of the shade. All along the way on this hike, we were often aware that we were walking in the well-worn path of a flash flood. Now, there was no water here while we were walking, but when the winter rains come in Israel, flash floods can race through the wilderness on their way to lower elevations. It's hard to imagine how a place so dry could be transformed into a place where a river suddenly appears, but it happens every year. We saw this flash flood in another part of the wilderness in 2019. The water had already stopped traffic. All the drivers knew better than to cross the flooded road. As you get closer to the Dead Sea, the lowest point on earth, these rivers in the desert can turn into a force so destructive, you've got to see it to even believe it. On our hike through this particular canyon, we passed three vehicles that bore witness to how destructive the flash floods can be. Someone had parked too close to a flood zone miles and miles away from this location. The flash flood and the rocks of the canyon did the rest. And finally, part of our hike showed us the full impact of how difficult, of how wild the wilderness can be. We faced an intimidating climb to reach the final leg of our one-day journey in the Negev Desert. All right. 
tell you one thing, we would never, ever do this part of the hike if there was any rain forecast anywhere in Judah because it could be raining 15 miles from here, 20 miles from here, and we wouldn't even know it, but eventually the flash floods work their way down here, and that's why this place is so very dangerous. Many, many people have died in flash floods. But in the wilderness wandering, there were also flash floods and canyons, but none of these modern day helps like these steel ladders and footholds. I'm very glad they're here today. Very glad. Well, we've been out here for the better part of about five hours. Not really that long of a hike when you compare it to 40 years in the wilderness with Moses and the children of Israel. Uh, several times a day I've thought about that story. And I bet every time you've read it, you've thought about some of the same things like, uh, well, how, how the Israelites were whining for water. You remember how quickly they complained? Listen, I had some water, but I was pretty, pretty much aware this was going to be a life or death factor all day long, even on a short hike. Um, they, they were in a position of great uh, peril, really, and for food, and just for community. It was hard out here. I mean, this is part of the places where they, they wandered for 40 years, and a lot of them didn't live through it. And Moses got very frustrated with the people complaining. So yeah, they complained. But you know, the wilderness is where God taught that group of people how to be his people. They came out of Egypt. They didn't know anything. They didn't have the, the tabernacle. They didn't have any of the elements of worship. God gave the law on the mountain down in the Sinai Peninsula. And, and then they learned how to be God's people. And it was in the wilderness where they learned faith, how to trust God completely with all their hearts, all their soul, all their mind, all their strength, all the time. There are, there are times when we, we go through seasons of life, grief, hardship, whatever kind of trouble, whatever kind of wilderness it might be that, that you've described it that way in your life. Maybe you're just looking for direction. Here's, here's all I could say to you after this experience today is, well, this is where you learn faith, in the hard places, not in the easy places. In fact, there's a rabbinical saying here in Israel that says God gave his people the promised land. That's the truth. And it is a beautiful land. It's green. It's got lots of water, lots of food, lots of everything you would want. That's the promised land. But God reserved the wilderness or the desert for himself. And anytime God wanted to do something great in a person's life, he would bring him, he would bring her to the desert. And many of the greatest people in the Bible spent a lot of time in the desert. If you're in the desert, if you're in the wilderness, learn those lessons of faith. Take them deep into your soul and come out of the experience with the kind of trust that can see you through the rest of your life. I think that's the lesson I would take home from this incredible experience that we've had today. From the Negev Desert, I'm Andy Cook.